another Dorkler action figure review. Today I'm taking a look at the Mythic Legion's Poxus Wave Brute Scale Kalazir of the Djinn. This wave was a long time coming. The pre-order ended just slightly over two years ago. I think it ended in January of 2022. So that is a long wait. I remember when this wave was revealed, it was my first Legion's Con that I had gone to. I didn't make it to that G-Con but they had these on display at Legion's Con, and this was absolutely my favorite figure from that reveal, and this is why I chose to review this particular figure first. So let's get into this review. Zooming in here for a close-up of that phenomenal head sculpt with all these little, like, ridges carved in, and even those, like, white dots on the forehead, those are raised. The eyebrows are, you know, three-dimensionally coming off of his face over here. Then you have the tusks on the front, and he's even got a pair of earrings that are looped through a hole in the ear. I believe those are metal, because it's got that um, separation over on the other side over here. Then he's got these horns that have, they're almost like metallic, right? These like shiny horns, really just otherworldly look to this figure, and I do really love the color on it. It's not just a solid blue, the base has a bright blue, but then there's some like aqua highlights over the top. You can see it really well on the on the forehead, on the top of the head up here, like the differences in the, the shades and the colors that kind of transition. So that is really cool and it matches well with the purples. I, I love the color scheme on this guy and I love the shading. I hope it's coming across pretty well on the camera because it's 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 really nice and it gives it that spirit like kind of quality to it that a solid colored figure just doesn't usually have. And then you've got this crazy long hair piece coming off the top here that just it pegs in and it the only articulation it has is a twist. It's not like one of the horse's tails that also have the um, the hinge there, but really nice piece moves really well in terms of that one point of articulation there and it pops in and out very easily. Then we've got a close-up of the necklace, lots of little metalwork details. We've got some metallic blues in a couple different shades. It's almost like, like um, so like this blue is almost like the matching blue for the base color of the figure and then this blue is like the highlight color of the figure. So kind of coming across on the on the necklace as well as the shading of the body of the figure. And that does have detail all the way around to the back. And this can kind of like float around a little bit. So when you're posing it, it might do something like this, you know, and you just want to kind of rest it back down if you're if you're getting it into a good pose. I believe these are the same arm guards as the Afarius figure, the Centaur. So nothing really new to write home about there, but they are nicely detailed and they are fully painted. You have the buckles, the straps, the leathers. And then here's a look at the belt piece, which is again, gorgeous, just awesome sculpt work. We've got some tassels hanging off the edge here and we've got some flaps on the side. That's got some wash. And yeah, it's got like purple sculpted bands of cloth up top there to match the purple piece that comes down as if it's all sort of like one piece, which I think does a good job. I think it is fairly seamless in that way and the colors match well. The skirt piece is fantastic with these patterns on here and you have the gold edge over the top there and it is wired and they did go back to using the nice stiff wires. I really like the wires on this and I hope we see more really stiff wires going forward with these um, with these figures. These wires just feel a lot stiffer or I don't know if it's just because it's a smaller piece it feels stiffer to me, but they do feel good and this thing is fully wired up two sides. So you've got a wire on this side and then a wire on this side and this is just one solid straight um, you know, ribbon that you could pull off and use and mix with your other figures. And then this piece in the middle is actually attached to the skirt. It's sewn onto the skirt as well. And that's a pretty standard looking, you know, t uh, like loincloth type piece for, for Legion stuff. Then he does have the matching lower leg pieces, but these are not like the arm pieces. The arm pieces are the forearm with the twist here, like it's a separate forearm piece. The leg pieces are over the top of the leg. So it's actually a bare leg under there when you get down beneath it. And this piece is over the top of that leg. And then of course we've got the feet with his black toenails and the base of the feet here. So really cool getting a look, nice close up of a brute scale figure in full for sort of the first time. I know we had it in Cosmic, but for the first time for Mythic Legions, we finally have a full on 
brute scale figure. Here's a zoomed out look so you can get a sense of the overall silhouette of Kalazir, who stands just about eight inches tall at the top of the hair. And for some size comparisons, I'm going to start it off with a couple figures that are pretty much exactly the same height as Kalazir. On the left is the Cosmic Legion's Canox, who is also a brute scale figure. And on the right is the Dungeons and Dragons Strongheart from NECA Toys. Next up, to get a sense of this brute scale with some standard Mythic Legions figures, on the left is the Deluxe Elf with some C. Jessam Clothgood additions. And on the right is a Xylernian Guard Bardrick kit bash with a little Harker cloth goods and of course the Monkey King head. Bringing in some other lines on the left is a Masterverse He Man kit bash with a custom head sculpt by Monster Machine Creations painted by EM Custom Parts. And on the right is the Bandai Tamashi Nation's movie realization. Ronin Boba Fett, which if you're looking for a pretty close color match, that is that is very close in color. Bringing in some larger figures on the left is the Ogre Scale Ogre Builder from Mythic Legions. And on the right is Blade Master Wang from Maestro Union. And finally, a couple smaller figures, some Hasbro standard figures on the left is Grand Admiral Thrawn from the Black Series. On the right is the Cobra Trooper from the Classified line. For accessories, we have this massive scimitar-like sword that is essentially as big as the figure. The thing is huge. There's a lot of nice little details. You've got that like spiral detail on the handle, on the grip of the sword. And then you have this, what seems to me some sort of dragon or demon head that breathes fire down onto the blade here. Just a really cool, massive weapon. And it wouldn't be a genie without a lamp. And here is a nicely detailed one with scroll work. And there's some silvers in with the gold and some black wash here. Uh, nice little piece. There's no function to it. Like this top doesn't come off or anything, but uh, it's cool that they incorporated the lamps into the story of the Jinn of Mythos because this guy's story is kind of interesting because he's like after the wizard who trapped him. And according to lore, it's the wizards of Basilia who trapped them. But since Arazak was formerly of Basilia, I kind of have a feeling like one of his allies, Arazak, might be the one he's after. I don't know. Just my own little fan theory here with this particular Poxis wave. He has two magic effects that you kind of wrap around his arm. They're nice and soft and they have this kind of spiral smokiness. I could almost imagine them sort of spiraling out of the tip of the lamp here. And then he does come with one alternate pair of hands and these are gesturing hands that you can use with the magic effects. Both sets of hands have horizontal hinges. For articulation, if you have any standard 1.0 Mythic Legions figures, you probably know what you're getting into. This is really just a blown up scale version of those 1.0 style figures, the, the, you know, the basic Legions figures. I guess, you know, the first thing is that this does have the twist on the hair piece, which I'll pop off for the articulation. The head can rock up this far and then it can look down a little bit and cock side to side on that on that ball joint there. I like that they have nice big ball joints because it does give a good amount of range even though it's just like one point of articulation. Into the shoulders can hinge up this far, nice and smooth. They actually move really well, can spin all the way around. We have that single jointed elbow that comes just about 90 degrees and there's a twist at the top of the elbow. You can twist at the top of the arm guard there twist at the wrist, and then there's that hinge that I mentioned earlier at that wrist. There is a ball jointed torso, so he can kind of cock side to side a little bit there, and he can crunch forward a bit and back a bit and twist as well. And then the one surprise to me about the articulation is that we now have a ball joint at the hip instead of the hinge. So this used to be just a hinge just like this, but now we have a ball joint. So, you know, in addition to that thigh swivel at the top, it can twist at that ball joint and kind of swing around and just gives you a little more freedom of movement there. So nicely done. He can go out into the splits. He can kick forward. He can kick back a bit. And of course you can twist at that thigh, but yeah, that ball joint kind of caught me off guard. It's very cool. And then we do have a hinge at the knee and he can come to about 90 degrees there. And there's a twist below the knee. Of course, I said earlier that this piece is over the top. So I can show you that. Boom, just like that comes right over the top. So there's no actual twist at the leg, at the, um, the lower leg there. There's no twist. And you have a twist above the ankle. You have a hinge at that ankle and a rocker. 
And only one swap here because of time constraints and, you know, it's a brute scale figure. There's not a ton of other brute scale figures to mix and match with. Of course, it is compatible with 1.0 figures. You can get creative that way. But one thing I thought was super obvious was to take his cloth goods and put it on the Monkey King. And if you're looking for an upgrade to the Monkey King, this is it right here. I think that if somebody's parting out a Kalazir, this is a no-brainer. Grab the cloth goods from it and pop it on the Monkey King. I also put that magic effect on there just for, you know, just for whatever. But the cloth goods is what this is all about. I think this looks fantastic. Fantastic. And yeah, so this figure absolutely rocks. It was a long time coming and it was a bummer not to have a large Mythic Legions wave last year. It really felt like 2023 was the cosmic year and now we're getting into 2024 and we're going to be like flooded with a ton of awesome Mythic Legions. I have the whole wave in hand. I just cracked this one open to get a review up pretty quickly, but I will be getting to other figures in this wave in terms of reviews. Thank you for watching my video, and until next time, may the Force be with you.